all right welcome to my youtube channel this is is Grace tutor and what i do here is solve technical problems and i also provide very important information that can make use of for you to have a better performance in your technical drawing examinations and if you're a technical drawing student i want to ask that you subscribe to this youtube channel put on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you will be notified and help me to share my videos with your friends who are also technical drawing students and very important as i usually say you need to practice technical drawing so whatever you are taught by your teacher when you get home please practice it so that you can master it and that will help you to be able to solve any problem that has to do with technical drawing that comes your way so right now uh what you, the paper you have been on the screen um is for gc 2021 uh, if you remember very well that uh, they wrote GC two times in the year 2021. So the the uh, the one they wrote first, I have provided answers to the questions that is the objective questions. So the second one is what you are viewing on the screen. So I want to provide answers to these objective questions. I'm going to answer question one to thirty on general question on geometrical drawing, and then I will answer question thirty one to forty. On building drawing now let's start okay so question one says that the sketch in figure one show two views of a right cone in first angle orthograph projection now we have been asked that the true length of OT is represented by true length of OT so this is OT that we are referring to that is the radius from here to here so this is point O and this is point T so they are now asking for the true length on the front elevation. So the true length of OT on the front elevation is O1S. That is option D, O1S is the correct answer. Then um, for us to answer question two, we have a little information here that says that a line five meters long is represented by one centimeter on a scaled diagram use the information to answer questions two and three then question two says that the representative fraction of the scale used is so for what for us to get the answer here we know that representative fraction is equal to the length on drawing over actual length length on drawing over actual length so looking at what we have here uh we have the answer to be one centimeter one centimeter over five meter over five meters so we convert five meters to centimeters and that will give us one over 500 that is option c one over 500 then moving to question three we are still making use of the same information given here that the actual length of a four millimeters portion of the scale line is if you do the calculation the answer is 2.00 meters if you work it out then coming to question coming to question four as you can see here that the major diameter of the ellipse shown in figure two is equal to so if you look at this the major diameter of the ellipse here is the sum of the distance of point u from the focus f1 and distance of point u from the focus f2 that means we sum f1u plus f2u and that gives us the answer to be that gives answer to be uh, option a is the correct answer so that gives us the major uh, diameter of the ellipse which is also equal to distance ts it's also equal to distance ts okay now let's move to the next question that is question five that says that which of the following squares is correctly dimensioned which of the following squares is correctly dimensioned so looking at what we have here option c is the correct answer option c is or d square in option c is correctly dimensioned okay then question six figure three shows two views of a casting in third angle orthographic projection then we are asked the end view x is the end view x is so looking at what we have here they want us to uh they want us to get what the diagram will look like here or what the end view will look like here and looking at the object in this direction so 
I'm taking option A as the correct answer. Option A as the correct answer because um, looking at other options that we have here, looking at other options that we have here, um, then, okay, let me talk about option A that I took. And if you look at it, if I'm looking at this object in this direction, I'm supposed to DC the line at this point, supposed to be to be a thick line. But here in option A, they showed it as hidden a uh, line, which is not correct. But looking at other options, wait, okay, then looking at this point in the in, in, in this front elevation, this point, I cannot see this point when I'm looking at it in this direction. So that will give us a uh, short dashes line. Uh, to give that the line short dashes line so which is what we already have here but every other option looking at them here um i, I don't see that like, even uh, if you take option c this is supposed to be short dashes line because you cannot see this oh there is a hole here you can't see it when we are looking at it in this direction but this line is made thick i don't know why but i'm taking option a as my answer because this line that uh, that is used to represent the whole is a short dashed line. It's also a short dashed line, but the only error here is this line that's supposed to, well, the, the door to have made this line a thick line. But I will take option A as my own uh, uh, answer. Okay, then coming to question seven, which says the type of arc shown in figure four is called, the answer is segmental arc, segmental arc. Then question 8 says that the shaded portion of the circle in figure 5 is, so if you look at this very well, this is a sector, so option A is the answer. Then question 9 says that which of the following lines is used to show hidden details on a drawing? So if you look at this, option D is the answer. That means we have short dashes line, short dashes line, option D. Uh, short dashes line is used to draw the hidden details of an object then question 10 when a rod is pivoted at one end and its other end is free to rotate the locus of the free end after a complete revolution is in the shape of look at it we fixed a point and the other end the, the, uh, we have a line we fixed one point of the line and the other end is able to rotate to turn for one complete revolution that will give us a circle the shape or the locus produced will be a circle that is option c then coming to question 11 says that a practical application of the principle of an involute is in the construction of springs is the construction of springs then question 12 that is option a so question 12 says that the type of drawing to show individual items in their relative working positions is called assembly drawing. It's called assembly drawing. You have bought a, a, an electric fan and you brought out you, you, you brought out the manual. If you check the manual, you will see how the parts are to be assembled together. So such a drawing is known as assembly drawing. That is option B is the correct answer. Then coming to uh, question 13, uh, we are going to make use of this sketch to answer the question, but let me read this. It says that the sketch in figure 6 shows the front elevation and plan of an object used to answer questions 13 and 14. And the question, question 13 says that the solid shown in the sketch is a truncated square pyramid. Looking at it very well, it's a trun truncated square pyramid. So that is option D is the correct answer. So let's look at the... Uh, question 14 so in which we are still going to make use of uh, uh, that sketch so question 14 says that the view labeled q is in the is you know, sorry the view label q is the auxiliary plan so you can go back and check it is the auxiliary plan that view is the auxiliary plan so question 15 uh, figure 7 shows a casting in isometric projection then we are asked that the plan view of the casting is the plan view of the casting is option A. That gives us option A. So we have this line as a rectangle. This is it here. Then we have this line as a rectangle. It's from here to here. Then we have this. This is going to give us, give us 
a short rectangle or it results in a square. That's what we have here. Why this hole is hidden here? This square hole is hidden here. It is shown here. And then we also have a rectangular hole. And that is what we have here. So option A is the correct answer. Question 16 says that which of the following pairs of triangle has equal area as deduced from pilogram PQRS shown in figure 8? Then uh, the correct answer is TSR and QSR. Why am I choosing the uh, option C, TSR and QSR? Is because there is a theorem that says that triangles on the same base with a pilogram is equal in area is equal uh, 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 equal in area so tsr and qsr are, uh, are of the same area so the answer is option c then coming to question 17 that says that the true shape of the cut the true shape of the cut surface on plane xx of the cylinder shown shown in figure 9 is the answer is option c it will give us this shape to give us this shape when we cut this part off so this is the shape that we are going to see on this surface then coming to question 18 the value of the exterior angle of a regular octagon is the answer is option b that is 45 degree so the value of the exterior angle of a regular octagon is 45 degree then question 19 says that which of the following is a plane figure everybody should know that that is option d trapezium is a plane figure Why prism pyramid and cuboid are, are solid figure then coming to question 20 we have to make use of this diagram to answer question 20 and 21 i said here that um figure 10 shows a link mechanism where om equals 40 millimeters and mn equals 125 millimeters this will answer questions 21 and 20 uh, 20 and 21 so question 20 says that the maximum displacement of n as om rotates about o is 165 so why is it 165 i did i get 165 by the time this uh this om moves or rotates and get to this point distance from here to here distance om will lay on this point so m will be at this point that is 40 millimeters but mn will slide backward so that means we are going to have from here to here to go beyond this point and that is 125 so if i add 40 millimeters from here to here plus this 125 that has moved and go go beyond this point so that will give me 165 millimeters so that is maximum displacement of n okay so that's 165 so option d is the correct answer then coming to question 21 that says that link mn as applicable to the link to the mechanism represented the sketch by represented by the sketch is a connecting rod so this distance from year to year is a connecting rod take note of that then coming to question 22 so we are going to make use of this sketch to answer question 22 and as we have here the sketch in figure 11 shows the enlargement of a plate used to answer questions 22 and 23 so question 22 says that the size ratio of plate r to plate q is so let's look at it so size ratio of plate r to plate q is um okay so we come from here one two three so that is three so if you write three down then we count that of q so one two three four five six seven eight so one two three okay then for uh for okay for q that is nine so that is three ratio nine so three ratio nine will give us one ratio three so the answer is option b one ratio three so then um question 23 says that the size ratio of plate p to plate s is so let's go and look at it again so here we have um 
so p to s so p here we have but we have six so we write down six and s is what s is 12 so six ratio 12 ratio 12 we give us one ratio two so that means option a here is the correct answer one ratio two so question 24 in circumscribing a triangle it is necessary to so once you circumscribe a triangle you have to bisect any two sides of the triangle you have to bisect any two sides of the triangle so when you bisect any two sides of the triangle and you draw the bisectors the bisector will intersect at the point by putting your compass at that point and extending the pencil point to uh, point a or point b or point c you draw a circumscribed circle to that triangle then question 25 says that an ellipse is shown in figure 12 where ot and mn equals 100 then the question now is that the length the length of tf1 is the length of two tf1 will be equal to 50 will be equal to 50 so if you look at the question that we have answered before on ellipse like this uh distance the sum of distance uh tf1 and tf2 is equal to distance mn which is the major diameter this is the major diameter so it means that tf1 is half of distance mn is half of distance mn so that means tf1 is equal to 50 millimeters that is option d so question 26 says that when a circle is drawn in isometric projection no progression here isometric projection it appears as an ellipse it appears as an ellipse so whenever you draw a, a circle on an isometric object so the circle will give you an ellipse that's what we have there then coming to this question question 27 in figure 13 p uh, sorry in figure 13 points 01 O2 and O3 are centers of circles R, P, and Q respectively. Then I believe you can see the diagram. Then the question now says that which of the following expresses relationships of the circles is true? Which of the following expresses relationships of the circles is true? So by my own calculation, which I'm going to explain to you, uh, if you look at it distance for circle for circle o1 sorry for the circle r here distance tm is the diameter for circle r and for circle rp distance mn is the diameter we center o2 and for circle q distance tn is the diameter so if you look at the our construction here you see that you see that triangle tmn is a right angle triangle so if you make use of pythagorean triples which i used and i found it uh, valid i put uh, tm as four millimeters mn as three millimeters and tn as five millimeters if you, have, uh, if you understand what i'm saying okay then by my calculation I found that the correct answer is option B that the sum of a, the area of P and that of R is equal to the area of Q to the calculation as I said and you found this uh, correct then we move to question option B is the correct answer here so question 28 variable resistor can be represented by option B is the answer so the answer is option B for variable resistor then question 29 which of the following views shows the plan of the object shown in figure 14 so the correct answer is option C is the correct answer we have this rectangle here it is represented here and then we have this shape here you can see it here and this square is here so this is the plan option c is the correct answer question 30 so here we have a regular solid bounded by four equilateral triangles triangular faces is a tetrahedron that is 
option option a is the correct answer on that so we are done with the first 30 question on geometrical drawing so we now move to question 31 to 40 on building drawing question 31 on building drawing uh we have a semi-elliptical structural member that supports the load over an opening in a wall is an arc is an hack so question 32 says that the type of door movement shown in figure 15 is a double sliding is a double sliding so question 16 uh okay sorry question 33 and 34 we have to use this diagram to answer that so question 33 says that the path label l m and n is respectively so the correct answer is option c l is an art core c is a concrete slab and n is a block wall so the answer is option c question 34 says that the type of foundation is called the type of foundation here this is a strip foundation that is option a on that so we come to question 35 that says that the sketch in figure 17 shows the end view of a building if is dimensioned in the building as the if is dimensioned as z here so option d is the correct answer distance from year to year is what we call is projection then question 36 says that which of the following information is not true on a plan on a site plan so the answer is option b we don't put building cost on a site plan so if site plan or uh, building cost is not put on a site plan then question uh, 37 says that which of the following material symbols represent insulation that is option d it represents insulation so coming to question 38 the roof member which transfers load in load imposed on the roof to the block wall is a tie beam that is a tie beam it transfers the load imposed on the roof to the block wall and that is the tie beam okay then question 39 here we have the piece of wool which is used to conceal the meeting line of a door of a door frame and a wall is called a uh, arc shape it's called arc shape then question 40 says that the plumbing symbol shown in figure 18 represent a stop valve this is a tungsten valve so we have answered question 31 to 40 on the building drawing so we have answered all the questions question one question one to 40 that is all that you need to answer on this objective question once you are done with that and uh, you submit and your mark will be given to you when it is marked so thank you for watching and thank you for listening keep on practicing and god bless you